Welcome back to Husky Softball Stadium. The team's just wrapping up their anthem lines and they are getting ready to play ball. Let's take a look first at the Arizona State starting lineup. A bit of a change from some of the batting orders that we've seen of late here for Coach Wells, Angie. Yeah, she's trying to shake things up just a little bit, trying to get a little more offensive production. She's moved Michelle Smith uh, into the second spot and uh, moved Baca uh, down to the number nine spot. Linda Wells, an unbelievable legacy, coaching history, so rich. She's in her 16th year with Arizona State, her 31st year overall. This is a woman who has coached at the collegiate level in volleyball, in basketball, and in softball. The reigning head coach right now of the Greek national team led Greece, the home team, in the 2004 Olympics. She has decided to call it a career. She will retire at the end of the season. We don't realize we're on the uh, Linda Wills farewell tour yes, right now. And unlike Cher, she has promised me she will not bring another year of concerts out. Okay, the pitcher today for Washington, Caitlin Noble, the sensational freshman from local Sammamish, Washington, a star at East Lake High School, and she's continued to shine for the Huskies, Ange. Look at that opponent's batting average, 196. Caitlin, a very complete pitcher. She's got a fastball, a changeup. She's got an off-speed drop, really throws hitters off on their timing. She's got a screwball as well that breaks in on the right-handed batters and away from the lefties, and a curveball as well that does the exact opposite. Ninth in the nation in strikeouts per game with over 11. Taking a look at the defense that the Huskies are lining up. As we mentioned, it's the Pac-10 Player of the Year, Rivera, who's going to be the field general in the catcher spot and a sensational freshman at shortstop for Washington. Ashley Charters, Angie, is someone to watch. She has really been able to come in and uh, make a huge impact in just her freshman year, and that's very difficult to do at the shortstop position. And that very strong middle infield, she's got Dominique Lestraps at second base. Lestraps, as a freshman, was named third-team All-America selection, so she already has an impressive resume. Angie, I'm very intrigued by these youngsters that, that come in and, and can shine at the collegiate level, and that's going to be a theme today. The umpires, Jerry Maguire behind the plate, Lori Bish down the first baseline and Calvin Walker at third. And we are ready to play ball. Arizona State bringing Bridget Karen up to the plate first. The junior right fielder transferred from San Diego State University where she actually won conference championship in the Mountain West in 2003. Karen's a lefty slapper, relies on location more than anything else. Uh, it isn't the type of slapper that's just going to rely on her speed, but really tries to place the ball. Maybe uh, makes the shortstop go to her backhand. Uh, same thing uh, perhaps with the second baseman up the middle. Really tries to place her slaps. Noble struggling a little bit to find the strike zone early. Already 3-0. Two and one. Excuse me. And you were signaling the strike to me. She was indeed correct there. <laughs> We've got a swing of the bat into left field. Play is made. First out for Noble. That was Greer with the catch and left. You saw Lauren Greer kind of dance under that one just a little bit. And although the skies have cleared up, the wind has really picked up. And, and with Husky Softball Stadium, you will see the flags down the first baseline. Right now, they are blowing in one direction, and the flags on the left field line are blowing in a complete other direction. So it really <laughs> swirls <laughs> at the open end of the football stadium. Well, when you plan a stadium right next to a lake, that's exactly what's going to happen for you. It's a beautiful view, but I'm sure that the swirling winds are trouble for the players. Up next for the Sun Devils, Michelle Smith. Michelle Smith, uh, predominantly a bunter and spacker. Uh, everyone's in a great while to see her swing away, but not very often. I thought she was showing Buck Bear. The count is one and one. Linda Wells has decided to put Michelle Smith into the lineup today. She's been doing everything that she, uh, she could ask of her, and, and this is her reward today. Opportunity to start is always pleasant. She had only two at bats in 27 games last year. She's definitely making more of an impact this season. 
two and one to count. One out already for the Huskies on the board. Looks like Noble's trying to lead her outside. And Noble missing just a little bit with her control. Yesterday against Arizona, she did such a fantastic job of working inside and outside corners of the plate, plain painting black on both ends. And today she's just been a little off. Foul ball, count is full. The people that are seeing softball for the first time and looking at these 60 foot baits pass and the different the distance between home plate to the pitcher circle is, is 43 feet and you think why on earth is this hitter actually running towards the pitcher and making it even shorter? Strike out looking, the worst kind if you're a hitter. Now batting for the this is where Caitlin Noble loves to live against left-handed slappers. If you're a good slapper, this is a very difficult pitch to hit. The outside pitch is the easy one to get to because you're trying to hit that to the left side of the infield, to the third baseman, to the shortstop. It's that inside pitch that is so hard to stay inside of. It really jams you, and it really ties up lefty slappers. At the dish now, Mindy Coles, we were talking about her earlier, Andrew. She is having an unbelievable offensive year for a freshman, no less. Leads her team in average RBI, home runs, runs, slugging percentage, and on base percentage. And sometimes it'll take a freshman to, to a little while to come in and, and to feel comfortable leading her teammates more vocally than by example. She's been able to come in and do both right away. One and one to count to Coles. Outside, two and one. I'm amazed at her power numbers when you look at Mindy Cole's frame. She's listed at 5'4". She's probably a buck 30 dripping wet, and that's all muscle. If that, you read yeah. about that. She, uh, she's she got a very short, quick, compact swing. Kind of like that. The other thing that she has in that small little frame is some speed. She leads the team with steals. Uh, she's got 10 of them, so even if she's not hitting a double, she's actually manufacturing them. Right. Very impressive. And very patient for a freshman. Yeah, you see Caitlin Noble trying to nibble on that outside corner of the plate, not trying to give Mindy Coles anything on the inner half of the plate that she can turn on and get her hands extended on. Full count to Coles. And she takes the walk. That is a fantastic strike zone for a freshman. Caitlin Noble doesn't miss by now much on that. It gives you an idea of what this kid has been able to do uh, already in such a short period of time. To watch that pitch go by, to know and trust her strike zone. And she's still learning her strike zone. Coles actually leads the Pac-10 in strikeouts, too. So she's getting it done, or once in a while, she just misses all around. Ellen well saying Coles still, you know, filling up uh, some holes in her swing. But again, this is a process, and, and she's made uh, so many great strides already. From the freshman Coles to the senior, Valerie Sevilla. Starting left fielder. Ooh, she liked that one that ended up dribbling in, didn't she? As she did, and that was the first time that we've seen Caitlin Noble's change up, and even though it ended up rolling to the plate, uh, that one started up around the knees, and uh, Sevilla thought it was going to stay there, ended up rolling to Rivera behind the plate. And Sevilla swinging, inning over, two strikeouts on the board already. For the freshman, Caitlin Noble, we will see what Washington brings offensively after this. We're scoreless at Husky Stadium, but it's early. We're just in the bottom of the first. We already see the first pitch delivered for Arizona State's Valerie Desiree, excuse me, Serrano. The leadoff hitter for Washington. Just like Arizona State, a sensational freshman. This time it's Ashley Charters for the Huskies. Fouls one up. Nearly took out Harry the Husky over in the, uh, in the crowd there. Harry the Husky nearly took one in the noggin on that foul ball. There's first year coach Heather Tarr. Interesting coaching comparison today. We've got the rookie for Washington and the sage veteran for Arizona State. 
Very contrasting styles as well. Uh, Linda Wells, a very intense coach. Uh, Heather Tarr, uh, a little bit more laid back. Uh, both of them, though, very good teachers of the game. We have a little discussion here on the field, Ange. What did you see? I, the only thing I can think of is every once in a while, if a uh, slapper ends up uh, nearly shaking hands with the pitcher, sometimes uh, they'll ask for a little clarification uh, as far as how much room she's going to get out of the box. <laughs> This is awesome. You gotta love looking at this. I mean, Linda Wells has been doing this for so long. She's obviously a master tactician, <laughs> you know, with the with the arms. Yeah, no, there's no such thing as personal space when you're arguing <laughs> on a uh, softball field. You can see she's the seventh most successful active coach in Division One history. She has 910 career wins between her tenures at Minnesota and Arizona State. That's ninth all time. Seven pies on the active list. KG veteran. Heather Parr just like, hey, she could. <laughs> it's early. Yes, it is. It's early. You've got to pace yourself. You've got to pace yourself. It's the Huskies' first hitter, and we've already got a lot of excitement, and we've already had our first wild one. A lot of a little bit too high for the catcher, Heidi Kanabi. Interesting pitching staff for Arizona State. You've got the freshman Katie Burkhart, and you've got the junior Desiree Serrano. Third all time right now in career strikeouts, ninth all time in career victories for the Sun Devils. She's had such an impressive career in her first few years. She's really able to work all corners of the plate. She's got a rise in the drop, so a lot up and down out of Desiree. She's also got the screw in the curve, so that takes care of your inside and your outside corners, and she's got an off speed changeup that's very effective. And she wears number 99, which I found pretty unique. Oh, and she's coming at Ashley Charters. Ashley Charters has got to learn. You see, that's a rookie mistake right there. Put down the bat and pretend like a pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> sell it a little bit, There was a bit, lot honey. of room there on her forearm. She could have taken that one, huh? Yeah, take well, one for the team? Sell it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, pretend like a pitcher. Try to get your way to first base. Hey, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, she's like, oh, that hit my bat. <laughs> Fouls one off, staying alive, and this at bat, 2-2 two -two count. The umpires are human. You know, they're looking at, uh, at the batter to see what kind of reaction they have. They're not sure if the ball hit the bat or them. So you wanted like a wince, a grimace, maybe Absolutely. an out. Absolutely. You grab the forearm, you hobble down the first base, make the umpire bring you back. And instead, Charters get up. Fantastic pitch right there by Serrano. Now stepping to the plate in the second the base inside number corner four. Of the plate, inside Dominic corner of the plate on Ashley Pratt. Charters and then just froze her on the outside corner. A little change today in the Arizona State defense. We're used to seeing Mindy Powell's at second. They have moved her over to third in favor of last year's starting second baseman, Kristen Crenshaw. She's been dealing with a sprained ligament in her knee all season, but she's finally back. She's getting into her rhythm, and Coach Wells wants her in the lineup and out in the field as often as possible. So they're finally working her back in on a regular basis. Leaves Cowles at the hot corner. We will see how the star freshman responds to the defensive change today. It's Dominique Lestraps at the dish for Washington. Straps to the shortstop. Yes! Almost beat it out, Ann. That's beat. Almost beat it out. Dominique Lestraps, uh, not the fastest. Now uh, batting for the Dawgs, the catcher number 31. Like Bridget Karen for the Sun Devils, in that she relies a little bit more on the placement of the ball rather than just speed. She's more like a 2 9, 3 0 down to first base. Ashley Charters for the Huskies, who let off the game. She's more of a 2-6 type of slapper, uh, where that easily would have been a base hit for Ashley Charles. Yes. Just flies like a deer from home to first. And that brings up the star, the offensive star, the defensive star, the all-star for the Huskies, Kristen Rivera. Three-time All-American, looking to make it a fourth this year. 152 career walks, and they're going to add one more on top of it. This is going to be her 16th intentional walk of the season, 40th overall. Look, Linda Wells has been doing this a long time. She's not stupid. Yeah. Uh, why not? You have two outs. Put Christian Rivera 
uh, on first base and, and, and took her chances with Sarah Hyatt. How do all these walks affect the players with them? Oh, I think they have their effect on Kristen Rivera. And in sometimes, I mean, you have 16 intentional walks, but you have a lot more unintentional intentional walks where they're really not going to give her anything to hit. And hey, if she wants to go fishing after a pitch, go ahead, but we're not going to give you anything above the knees and below the letters. It becomes a matter of pick your poison, though, for Coach Wells, because that brings up Sarah Hyatt. She's leading the team right now with 33 RBI, and in part because she's always got the plate set with Rivera. Absolutely. Dominique Lestraff's also generally doing a very good job of finding a way to get on base, and Sarah has done a fantastic job of finding a way to get him in. Good contact hitter. Pitch low in the dirt, Rivera stays at first. Hyatt, the junior, local girl, out of Cedro Woolley, Washington. Went to Husky softball camps as a kid, so she just grew up knowing that this program is where she needed to be. There are a few of them out there as well. I, I can actually specifically remember Caitlin Noble, uh, who's in the pitcher circle today. You know, at 10 years old, and usually you don't even start coming to camps until 11 or 12. And uh, here was this little kid, and, and uh, die hard Husky back then. We got on the scoreboard, and, and uh, two balls, two strikes, two outs. I don't know if you're superstitious, but if I'm Sarah Hyatt, I'm fouling off balls until I get a 3-2 count. Uh, <laughs> no hitter likes to hit on the deuces. It's just not good luck. You're going you're gonna to hit a pee at someone, and they're going to catch it. Or this happens. Oh, boy. She wanted that third ball, like you said, and instead she looked at her third strike. Two strikeouts for both starting pitchers in this one as we head to the top of the second. It's a pitcher's battle at Husky Stadium. I bet when most people woke up this morning in Seattle, Washington, they didn't think they'd have the opportunity to take the boats out onto the lake. It was pouring this morning, but the great thing about living in the Northwest is, you know what? Those clouds will eventually go away, the sunshine will return, and you can clear off the dirt in the infield and get ready for softball. They say it everywhere. You don't like the weather, wait 20 minutes, it'll change, but that is nowhere more true and here in the Northwest. I think here and probably Hawaii are the two places that I've been to where it's like, you know, monsoon for five minutes and then all of a sudden the sun has returned. Sherry Zaleski leading off with the inning here in the four spot. Be down in the count, in the five spot, excuse me. She has been a real offensive presence for these Sun Devils this year, Angie. Leading the team with 10 home runs to Ty Cowles in that team leading position. Yeah, Zaleski got off to a great non-conference start. Won a few games for uh, the Sun Devils with her bat. Back 10, things are a little bit different, and she's still making adjustments. She goes deep in the right. Will it get over the head? No. Jackie Hansen, the transfer from Stanford, is, Stanford is there to make the grab. You saw that ball just kind of keep on going, keep on going. As we talked about right before that at bat is that Zaleski has a lot of power. And a very nice job of Jackie Hansen of staying with it and tracking it down. But that ball just kept on going. Great catch on the run. Zagrozny up now for Arizona State. In the lineup is the designated player, and that's something that's unique to softball. Right? It's different than the designated hitter. The designated player can play anywhere on the field. And, and it also, there's another rule that's different from baseball to softball is if you start a game through the re-entry rule in softball, you can actually come out of the game and then come back into the game. Now, you can only do that once, and you can only do it if you start the game. If you're that player that comes in to pinch run for someone, well, unfortunately, your day is over. 3-0 count right now to Zadrazny. <laughs> Takes her first step. Another one in there as 
Caitlin Noble found herself way behind, 3-0, and oh, and now she's worked two straight strikes to put Zadrozny in that tough position of facing full count. Wow, I'm impressed. Caitlin Noble ends up going inside with the screw ball, but we're already seeing Noble go into a lot of deep counts. You see that screw ball, it's a rise ball on its side, so it starts over that middle part of the plate and then just keeps on breaking in on a right-hander's hands. Also softball different from baseball in that the underhand motion is actually a natural motion of the arm. There's not a whole lot of stress on the shoulder with the uh, windmill style of pitching. That's very different from baseball where there is a tremendous amount of stress uh, that's put on the arm when you do throw overhand. So a softball pitcher you can throw two, sometimes even three or four games in a day. It's not unheard of. Uh, a lot of times during tournament play, you'll see one pitcher in the morning and then she'll come back and, and throw a game in the evening. So the physical exhaustion isn't bad, but the mental exhaustion might be a little bit trying. And now that is Jackie Hansen making the play in left field. It was Lauren Greer who had the great catch in right field to start the inning. We've got that squared away, and we're heading to the bottom of the second inning. Amy Miner batting right now for Washington in this scoreless game between the Huskies and Arizona State. Already down, one strike in the count. The junior center fielder. Having a great year offensively. Man. Yeah, Amy Miner has really come into her. And the thing that has happened with Amy Miner is she's just starting to figure out that this is a game built on failure, and it's okay. You know, you're going to look at her sitting right at 300. So, seven out of ten times you're failing, and you're still pretty darn good. And I think it took her a while because she's such a perfectionist. She's so hard on herself. She always wants to do everything so perfect. And, and the reality is, in this game, it isn't going to happen. And she's doing some things right. 28th in the nation in ribbies per game, 38th in the nation in slugging percentage. I mean, anytime you get in the top 50 in the national stats, it's so impressive. And 11th in the nation in home runs per game, tied for the team lead with 11. A couple of grand yeah, I was going to say, nothing wrong with a well. couple of grand slams to your credit. <laughs> no, not awesome. at all. She's uh, started to fill in some holes in her swing, but has started to show off her power this year. I like this kid a lot, very talented. And there she pops in a single down the line into left. So we're touting her power, but you know what? She can do the nickel and dime baseball just as well. Oh, it all looks the same in the books, right? That's right. That was a screamer in the left. Pontiac, official performance machine of the NCAA and the Pac-10 Conference are proud sponsors of today's Pac-10 softball game. See the first ever G6 at your Pontiac dealer today. Now it's gonna bring up Kathy Fisk. Uh, Kathy Fisk moved down a couple spots by head coach Heather Tarr. Uh, has struggled a little bit with her strike zone lately. Let's see what she's able to do here. Advances the base runner. You couldn't really ask for anything more with no outs on the board. Absolutely. Fantastic job by Kathy Fisk there. Yesterday against Arizona, several times the Huskies would get their lead runner on and they were not able to ex execute. They were not able to get that runner into scoring position. And you've got to give yourself up. You've got to give yourself up, drop the bunt, and now you've got a runner in the scoring position. You've got two chances to try to get her in. And you've got our starting pitcher, Caitlin Noble, batting. You want to talk about a supersonic athlete. Now, Angie, there was a crazy pitching change last minute thing that happened going into this one. I'm going to leave it up to you to try to explain this to the well, softball fans at home. All right, well, we'll see if I can do it. Caitlin Noble is listed as the DP, and uh, that way is even if she comes out of the game, she can still hit for herself. So Ashley Beck is listed as the pitcher today and Caitlin Noble is listed as the DP. So if Ashley Beck comes in to relieve Caitlin Noble on the mound, it doesn't matter, Noble will still be hitting. And that's why they do that. And then once Noble was made the pitcher, uh, Greer and Hansen out in the outfield switched. That's because why we got a little bit screwed exactly, up in the outfield. Exactly, uh, because uh, they have more balls go to right field with Greer, uh, or rather with Noble in the circle, and so Greer was in right. Noble, pops out, so. 
the right idea, runner on second base, less than two outs. You want to get the ball to the right side. You want to get it on the ground, though, or on the ground drive find a way to move that runner. And that brings up today's right fielder, Lauren Greer. She's riding a four-game hit streak. Yesterday's rain out against Arizona not included because those stats are not in the book officially until that game ends. Correct. Suspended. Suspended, and I believe it's going to be resumed in Tucson. Is that correct, Lauren? Exactly. The Huskies will have to go down there. And, uh, Great. And They're play in a hole, and they got to go to the visiting. Oh. They play three games against the number two team in the country. And the way Arizona's playing right now, you never know. They might be the number one team in the country by the time the Huskies make their way down there. Great pitch right there by Desiree Serrano. The change up took a little uh, bit off of that. And Lauren Greer, the pitch before, took a half and a half. And that's exactly what you want to do as a pitcher. You see a big swing like that? Well, let me slow that bat down just a little bit. Screw up your timing. Now as a hitter, you've got to reset your time, be ready for that fastball. And no, she wasn't. No, she definitely was not. Make it three strikeouts now for Desiree Serrano, who gets out of a jam with a runner on second. And there is Lauren Greer in right field today, as we are still scoreless, but Washington with its first hit on the board. Arizona State only to, able to muster one hit against UCLA. The thing is, is, in the beginning of the season, you saw all these Pac-10 teams scrunched up in the top 10 nationally, and then Pac-10 uh, play starts, and then they start beating up on each other. You know, they get all these non-conference wins racked up, but then they've got to start beating up each other, and, and their losses start to amount, and then all of a sudden you see all eight Pac-10 teams start to spread out against uh, the top 25. Heidi Knabby, a little chopper down to the shortstop. I play with that, oh, and a change of decision at first. It was the pullback to make the out, and then the arms outstretched, and Heidi Knabby is safe on the infield single. Wow, Ange, what a play. Well, slappers would love to get that kind of bounce. You saw Ashley Chargers took a split second to get the ball out of her glove. Tie yeah, goes to the runner, I guess. Actually, there's nothing in the rule books that says tie <laughs> goes to the runner. That's just something that we as fans make up. Oh, it's fun to make stuff up, though. Come on. Yeah, but <laughs> oftentimes you do see tie goes to the runner. It's fantastic hustle in that play. The one thing we're not oh, talking she, about she by Kanabe. She was tracking on the base and Ready to get there. Rihanna Bacchano lays down the little bunt. Everybody's safe. So Sarah Hyatt perhaps overcharging just a little bit on the bunt. And you saw Caitlin Noble, the pitcher, going to cover third base. Uh, she might have ended up covering it just a little bit early. This is a kind of a oops. Oh, there's the base. Oh my, they are short baselines, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Kanabi at second now, Baca safe at first, and we are at the top of the order with Bridget Perry. <laughs> Kanabi saying, I don't think anybody saw that. Oh no, nobody saw that. And with the wet dirt, it's not up and down your uniform either. We're having a conversation. Well, that's the other nice thing about these small dimensions of, of the infield <laughs> is you can bring everybody in. Actually, it's not uncommon in a softball game to see the outfielders come in for a conference in the circle as well. <laughs> wow. See what happened here on defense to put Kanabi on. Ashley Charter, she's got it. Uh, takes a step and a half got to the get glove. the grip. And you think about that step and a half and if she would have been able to get it out, she would have beaten Kanabi to first base with throw by a step and a half. That gives you an idea of how the short game works as well, because if Kanabi was left-handed, she'd be a step and a half closer to first base. And that's really the whole concept behind the short game, behind the slappers. It's just uh, something that you only really see in softball. Maybe Ichiro in Major League Baseball is similar to that slapper 
in softball. Well, and as somebody like myself, not an All-American like yourself, I've played recreational softball all of my <laughs> life. And the thing that I'm so impressed about in college softball is it is there's so much more strategy. It's a much more technical game. You don't see this kind of bunting in recreational softball. You don't see the manufacturing, the nickel and dime offense. What you see are people hitting away <laughs> Absolutely. But you don't see up on the scoreboard right now, you know, into the third inning, only two hits either. And, and so because the hits and consequently the runs are so few and far between, there does go, or there, there's a lot of strategy into every single at bat, every single scoring opportunity. Another one rolls through, but this time, Richard Karen is out at first. However, only the first out of the inning, and she advances her base runners. Now two Sun Devils in scoring position at second and third. Right where they want to be, Ange. You know, this is a, a perfect jira, a job by Bridget Karen is to move the runners into scoring position at second and third. Now the Sun Devils have two outs. All they need right now out of Michelle Smith is for her to lift something into the air, something they can tag up on and score a run. And of course for that to happen, Caitlin Noble has to give her something. <laughs> A little something she can do. Well, now Caitlin Noble uh, has got to, you know, put the screws to this inning. Find a way to get two outs without getting the run across. Now, Michelle Smith struck out looking in her first at bat, so she probably, inside her noggin, is, is processing, you know what? She already made me look silly one time today. Caitlin Noble's not going to do that twice on me. And you see Michelle Smith actually standing in there and swinging away. And generally, she's much more comfortable uh, bunting or slapping. But in this situation, with runners on second and third, she's got to swing away. One and two is the count. And now, with two strikes on her. The Husky infield takes a couple steps back because probably they're not going to see Michelle Smith bunt. And you will see that. With runners on second and third, a slapper might bunt um, and just find a way to load up the bases and let the big guys behind her hit him in. You can hear the reaction from the crowd. I think they wanted a strike on that last pitch. You can see where Caitlin Noble misses on this one. Tries for a rise ball. Michelle Smith, all five, two and a half of her. It's a very defined zone. <laughs> very close, a very close pitch. And that will win up Michelle Smith just on the inside. She thought it was inside enough, but instead it's just super clear to go. Jerry McGuire said, I gave you one, I'm not gonna give you two. That one, probably two close to take with two strikes. That brings up the freshman phenom, Mindy Fowles. This one is such a character. She is, uh, <laughs> she's the vocal leader, she leads by example, but usually if uh, you're trying to figure out who's the center of attention, it's her. That one just fouled, but Kathy Fist not waiting for the call. Go ahead and make the throw over there just in case. And why not? With runners on second and third, the Huskies want to get out of this inning as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. This is a dangerous one, though. Caitlin Noble's got to be careful. She's got first base open. And uh, Mindy Cold, Powell's rider, has, has hurt a lot of teams. Fouls went into the stands, and I've never seen a group of fans spread faster when the ball is coming their way. <laughs> Something about the optic yellow, well, I think it's good. Yeah, well, I think the other thing is you really don't get to keep the ball in yeah. a college softball yeah. game. So why go through the pain? It's not like a Major League Baseball game where nobody's going to come and ask you, hey, can we get that ball back? Yeah. What an unbelievable recovery by Caitlin Noble. Framing on the strikeout. Gets out of the jam with runners on second and third, and we are still scoreless heading to the bottom of the third. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. Just three hits between the two teams. Arizona State with a wonderful opportunity to get something done in the top of the third, and then Caitlin Noble went to work, and Oh, and she was the person to get it done at the plate. Mindy Cowles, the freshman, and you see this changeup on the bottom just drops out of it. What a fantastic idea by Caitlin Noble. 
the other freshman. Yeah, a pair of freshmen going mano a mano there in Washington's wins that battle. They call that pitch the oh shoot pitch in softball. I mean, with the small distances, when you pull back the string on a change up like that, I mean, it just buckles the knees, frazzles the hands, the head's shaking everywhere. <laughs> And a pitch that probably Mindy Cowles is still thinking about right about now. Oh, sure she is. Sure she is. But you can't let it uh, affect you for too long, especially where she's playing today over at third base. 1-1 one, one count on Jackie Hansen, who actually bunts one all the way over the fence and into the stands. Gives you an idea of the pop on Serrano's pitches right now. Yeah, they, they, there's Cowles over there at third base, and they've got to rename it for softball. Fine. Baseball, you want to call it the hot corner. It's got to be the smoking hot, stinking, ridiculously yeah. red hot. The hot boiling, corner scalding in, corner. Corner in softball. Oh, and I am so impressed by the courage of these young ladies because, especially on the slap hitters, it seems like they're about six feet away from the batter. Well, they're not far from that at all, <laughs> especially on the slappers. And the slappers, that's why they create so much havoc because they can bunt. So the third baseman and the first baseman, they've got to play in. They can slap. Uh, and then they can take your teeth out by swinging away. And uh, you had a lot of that, actually, when uh, the ball switch, and this is how old I am, Kara. I actually <laughs> played the first year uh, in the Pac-10 when they started using the optic yellow ball. And before that, it was a white ball with white seams, as that one goes long but foul. But it was a white ball with white seams, and you really had a hard time picking up the spin on the ball because the seams were the same color as the ball. So you really couldn't see if it was spinning or knuckling, and it was really difficult to pick up. But this optic yellow ball, First you have the red seams, and then they change the core, and it's so much harder. And there's Cowles, scoops it up like she's been playing third base all season, which has not been the case. Puts out Jackie Hansen. Saturday, we bring you all the excitement, drama, and athleticism of professional beach volleyball. See the sport's biggest stars compete head-to-head. -head. That's at 1 o'clock on FSN. So we're back at the top of the order now for Washington. Ashley Charters, the freshman sensation shortstop for Washington, struck out in her first at bat. We'll see how she does in her second effort against Desiree Serrano. I talked about how difficult that inside pitch is for the slappers. Last time out, Ashley Charters actually struck out on the outside pitch. And uh, when you're first learning this game at this level, the outside pitch is the hard one. When you've got it down pat, then the inside pitch is the hard one. Because what you'll see as a pitcher is you'll see these young slappers and they're already, you know, they're so anxious to get down the first baseline. They're so uh, anxious to uh, to make contact with the ball that they get leaning towards first base. You saw it again right there. She lost her backside. You know, the legs are already running to first base, but sweetie, you don't get to run to first base until you make contact with the ball. I'm amazed that they can hit the ball with all the movement that they have on their feet. I mean, these girls are running around. It's just tremendous. Yeah, it, it is. But look at the long levers on Serrano. I mean, she's, she's nearly shaking hands with you. I mean, she's almost to the front of the circle there. You can actually see in the dirt in the pitcher circle an absolute S that's been carved out by Serrano. It's like, it's like her Zorro mark, Serrano yes. with the S in the pitcher <laughs> circle today. Bring up a good point. Uh, a, a difference between women's fast pitch softball and men's fast pitch softball is they are actually allowed to jump. Whereas with women's softball, they have to drag that foot. So that is why you kind of see that S there. But uh, men, they get a jump and a leap. Dominique Lestrap's got a lot of that ball, and it bounces off Arizona State center fielder. Lestrap's going all the way to third on what would have been a routine but very well hit single, and Lestrap's speed carries her all the way to the three guys. Wow. I think Sevilla maybe peaked a little bit to see how hard Dominique Lestrap's was going to turn. And uh, you see right there, Dominique with straps, not slapping, actually swinging away there. You got to see her power, and here you get to see her speed, turning it on. Boy, and I'm not positive she actually hit second base. If she hit it, she just nicked it. We saw on the replay. I mean, that was like little toe to the corner of the bag and heading to third. Keeping her head up the whole time, looking for the signs. Very disciplined for a song. 
Amelico Straps has been playing this game for a long time at a very high level. There it yep. is. <laughs> yep, there it is. She, she nicked it with the big toe. And ideally, you would like to hit the inside corner of the bag because you use that basically as a pivot and then to push off and to set your angle towards third base. Uh, unfortunately uh, for Arizona State, they should be in a situation right now where they've got Dominique with straps at, at first, and instead she's standing on third. Anytime you can earn honorable mention, all-conference honors, which she did as a freshman, that is just such a beautiful launching point for to get honorable mention as a freshman in this conference. Yeah, and, and the other thing that Dominique Lestraps has had to do is adjust, actually. She was the leadoff hitter for the Huskies. Now she's in the number two hole. I think it's really benefited the dogs because, uh, you know, sh if Ashley Charters doesn't get on, she knows how to. And as we're talking about the wonderful skills of Dominique Lestraps, yeah, another <laughs> offensive player is being intentionally walked for an unprecedented 17th time <laughs> on the season. Uh, you ha have the... Um, you know, the, the most exciting play in, in, in hockey is the penalty shot. Well, that's the most boring play yeah, in softball. It's the, the intentional deadly. walk. Definitely. But runners on the corners now with two outs for Sarah Hyatt. I think Linda Wells came to the ballpark today, the Arizona State coach, and said, Kristen Rivera will not make a mockery of me. I am going to just... Take her bat out of the lineup and see how the Huskies do without her. <laughs> a lot of times, though, and not obviously when the game's on the line, you have a runner on third, but a lot of times, you know, at this point in the season, you will see uh, the Sun Devils actually pitch to somebody like Christian Rivera because they want to figure it out. Because if these two teams do their jobs, they might see each other again in the College World Series, and then you might be in a situation where you have to find some sort of loophole. Okay, maybe she doesn't hit this one out of the yard. Maybe this official just hit a single into the right center field gap. You know, but you want to try to figure out hitter's tendencies. I think Rivera's at a point where she'd love the opportunity to just try to hit a single because she's been walked now 41 times on the season. As we mentioned, 17 intentional walks. I mean, this is a, a senior in her swan song that wants to go out and just get it done. And now what they've done is they've finished off that about the Sarah Hyatt to load the bases for Amy Minor. I was wondering, and I can't speak a lot of, of, with experience as a pitcher, but after you intentionally walk someone, you've, it's a totally different mindset, wind up, and everything else to throw four balls three feet outside of the plate. And you wonder sometimes if it doesn't get a pitcher a little bit out of its out of the groove. And you saw that in the next at bat, she threw three straight balls to Sarah Hyatt, and then they decided to put her on. Now they brought out Kristen Rivera for a pinch runner. Jessica Wilkinson with fleet feet steps in at second base for Rivera. So now they've got the bases loaded and they've got two very quick runners on second and third in Wilkinson and the straps with Miner at the plate. I'm going to point out what we mentioned already. Miner's got two grand slams this year. <laughs> they could put out a walker at this point because if she hits it out, <laughs> they're all coming home. No, but Wilkinson definitely not a walker. She has got some some long legs and knows how to use them. Amy Miner, though, doing a good job. Hey, first pitch, swinging. Get one that you like in this situation. You might not get another one. Take your hat. We've seen both pitchers get into a little bit of trouble as far as base runners are concerned. Caitlin Noble was able to get out of her jam. We'll see how Serrano responds here with the bases loaded. Two outs now. Down the line into left. Wilkinson coming home. She's home with no problem. Great decision to put her as a pinch runner. And the Huskies have their first two runs on the board. Credit the two RBI to Amy Miner. And with no disrespect to Kristen Rivera, if she would have left Rivera in at second base, she would have been rounding third <laughs> right about uh, the point that that ball came into home play. Fantastic job by Amy Miner. Loves anything on the middle of the inside of the plate, something she can get her hands extended on, and Desiree Serrano gives her one. Middle to inside, and Amy Miner, fantastic job of hitting a line drive, not trying to do too much. Amy Miner, the offensive story so far today for the Huskies, other than in this inning, she had the first hit on the board until this bottom of the third, so she's now two for two with the two RBI. Still two base runners that Desiree Serrano is dealing with here for the Huskies on first and second. Hey, don't smile, kid, don't smile. 
I told you how hard this, this kid is on himself. Amy oh Miner. Hey, I'd be ear to ear <laughs> if I had and that's a, why just they knocked in a couple here. in a Your scoreless game. <laughs> You're just so fun. Yeah, the, the umpires loved how expressive I was as well. <laughs> just ask her. Uh, no, but Amy Miner, finally you see a smile creep across her face. Senior Kathy Fisk takes that one, so it's now a one and two count. She had the nice soft bump in the second to get Miner to second. She ended up stranded out there. Serrano settled down. Oh, she drilled this one to the wall and left. Another pair will score. And Kathy Fisk generally hitting much higher in the lineup. Uh, Heather Tarr said before the game that she hasn't been a very disciplined hitter, and so she moved her down a couple spots, and, and it ends up paying off here. Kathy Fisk perhaps uh, a little more focused in this at bat wanting to prove that she should be higher up, 3-4 in the lineup. This one just off the base of the wall. <laughs> Heather Tarr doing a windmill. Come on in, bring them all in. Got over Michelle Smith's head. And the she makes that, that tendency for the outfield to kind of look at what's going on in the infield. The ball dropped, and that was just enough time for both Hyatt and Miner to touch the dish. The only thing that's sort of strange and very unique to Husky Softball Stadium is that it's a wood wall out there. A lot of times you see chain links and it's very spongy. It just depends on how it hits the wall. And that one hit the base of the wall and then just kind of stayed straight up, didn't come back off that wall at all. We see Katie Burkhart, the freshman for Arizona State, in the bullpen warming up. Caitlin <laughs> Mobile now facing a one and one count with Kathy Fisk on second. Got a glimpse of, of the power that Kathy Fisk has. She's coming back from a broken wrist. She's been struggling with that injury all season long. She's got more power in her one right hand than I have in both of mine. <laughs> Noble fouls off another pitch. Interesting story about Kathy Fisk with the injury situation. Broke her left hand. February 13th against Tennessee. This is a player that has had two surgeries in her collegiate career for a herniated disc and a different broken hand, but she had never missed a game until this year with the broken hand. If you want to talk about tough and gutty, she's standing on second base right now. She's a tough kid, she's a tough kid. You can see the, the hand bandaged up. And by the way, if you want to pan the crowd, if you find a, a slight Korean woman screaming and yelling because the fans aren't <laughs> loud enough, you found Kathy Fisk's mom. <laughs> that will end the rally for the Huskies, but they get four on the board, two RBI from both Kathy Fisk and Amy Miner. Big inning for Washington. Big bottom of the third for Washington as they bring in four, and as we head into the top of the fourth, that is the edge right now. Four zip Huskies over the visiting Sun Devils. Amy Miner getting the scoring going in this game, leaving a couple with a line drive into left field. You see her out there in center field, and she's had to really take over a leadership role defensively. In years past, she's either been in right field or in left field, and it's a different ball game when you're in center field. You have control over the entire field. No one, not one person can call you off on a fly ball. She has control, and she's got two rather, on the collegiate level, mm -hmm. inexperienced players on the two sides of her, because she's got a freshman, Lauren Greer, on one side, and Jackie Hansen, who's a transfer from Stanford, but nonetheless, you know, she's new to the Huskies. Not a lot of playing time at yeah. this level, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and as a center fielder, you need to be the quarterback out there. Uh, you need to be the person that decides who takes the short angle, who takes the deep angle. Because when you're a center fielder, if you take the short angle and, and your left fielder or your right fielder, don't, they, if they don't have enough time to get to that backup angle, it's going for days in center field. We saw that just happen with the ball uh, Dominique Lestrade's hit. It got behind the center fielder, and, and they were just running for days. One of my favorite sayings, the infielder hurt you, the outfielder kill you. It gets by an <laughs> infielder, no big deal. Somebody's standing on first base. If it gets by an outfielder, Peach Royal are standing on third or touching home. You know what I'm saying? That's where the athletes are. I guess. <laughs> you sold me, sister. Ball outside to Valerie Sevilla. She's now an even 2-2 two -two count after trailing early in the at-bat. 
Found herself down two strikes. A couple of balls now by Caitlin Noble and the patience of the senior Sevilla paying off. Speaking of athletes, who's at, who's at the top of the Arizona State uh, list or uh, batting order? Two outfielders. Yeah, exactly. There's another outfielder right there. They're the rock stars. Jackie Hansen getting that one, and as you said, the winds wreaking havoc right now for the outfielders. That almost looked like it was trailing or tracking for Amy Miner. Mm -hmm. Took a left-hand turn, and Hansen was there. And you always know as an outfielder that the ball is always going to trail towards the line. If you're in right, it's going to keep peeling away towards the right field line. You're in left, it's going to keep peeling away towards the left field line. And by the way, can you make any wild guesses where I used to play? Um, <laughs> I might definitely complete. the outfield yeah. and the way you sold it, maybe center. <laughs> oh. right, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Great swing, though, by Valerie Sevilla there. That was. She got a lot on it, but Jackie Hansen had the beat on it. And what you want to do here, if you are the Arizona State Sunday, is find a way right here to get back one. You're probably not going to get back four of them all at one time. But find a way here to, to battle back and send a message to the Huskies that, hey, you got us cut. You touched us for a couple, but we're coming right back at you. In softball, Andrew, they always seem to talk about the big innings. All you need is one big inning. And a big inning could be two runs. Yeah, <laughs> to either put a game away or get right back into a game. Certainly, certainly. And, and when something happens in the top half or the bottom half of the inning, that very next half inning, you want to find a way uh, to get back into the game. Sherry Zaleski with a little dribble to short. Chargers with the put up. Chargers still, again, she's very young as a freshman, and although that's a, that's a fantastic play by her, you still see it's taken her a little while to get the grit, to, to, to find the ball uh, in her glove. Maybe, you know, in years from now, she'll, uh, she'll end up moving to a smaller glove. You'll see that. People well, come in from high school and they like the big peach basket. Yeah. And then they learn, hey, you know what? It's peach really basket good. slowing me down. <laughs> the peach basket is. It takes a while to find that ball in the peach basket. I think also we can't discount it. We're watching a lot of freshmen on both these teams today. And obviously, when you are a star, when you are beating up everybody and you're the all-county MVP in high school, it's very different when you come out and you're on a field with the exact same player times you, you know, I, times not. <laughs> I actually came into the college level as a shortstop, and, and I know that everything I thought I knew about the position was really completely out the window mm -hmm. at the next level. My footwork was different, uh, and I think actually that's the biggest problem with Ashley Charles is she is so fast, and her feet are so quick. If she could just actually get her feet to slow down a little bit and get in rhythm with her hand, uh, I think she actually be better off. Learning on the fly. Nothing like being thrown into the fire to do your, your learning. Angie Brasny watches that one go outside. 2-2 two, two the count. Angie's favorite, Deuce is wild. Yeah. Just two balls, two strikes, two out. Kim, foul them off until you get ball three, Kim. <laughs> foul them off until you know it's a ball. Drozny pulls one down to the line. That's going to be a tough one to get. Speaking of, of trying to retrieve balls, uh, Jamie Clark, who's actually somewhere in the ballpark today, uh, the uh, Olympian and, and former Husky, when her and Kristen Rivera used to take batting practice at the same time, I'm not kidding you, half the balls would be gone. Ended up, you know, they tried to keep track of it. Oh, a, a, a hit on 2-2-2. Two, two and two. That is Kim Zabrazny putting the superstition to rest. Beautiful single right up the middle. Just a nice level swing. Everything they try to coach you. And when Zabrazny is hitting the ball well, this is where she's hitting the ball. Middle uh, of the field, anywhere from center to right center field. She's staying on the ball longer. Kim Zabrazny, we haven't had a chance to talk about the Chandler, Arizona, Seton Catholic High Star very much. One of the smartest players on the Sun Devils team. Second team all academic Pac-10 last year and she got her work done. Now she will take a rest. Pinch runner has come in. That's Anita Hickson. 
and this kid can flat out fly. And again, because of the re-entry rule, Zadrozny will be able to re-enter the game. Because she is your designated player. Amita Hickson has actually been in the starting lineup for the Sun Devils, taken out of it today. Struggling a little bit with her strike zone. She's got 21 Ks compared to two base on balls, but she's still uh, able to contribute in some way to your team because, again, she's got tremendous speed. Kristen Crenshaw pulls one foul. Now it's an 0 2 count. Crenshaw has been coming back from a knee injury. She's just getting back. She's worked very hard to get to this point. Wasn't in yesterday's game against the UCLA Bruins. You see Ashley Beck warming up in the bullpen now for the Huskies. Showing bunch, we thinks it, ball outside. Haven't seen any steal attempts yet, man. No, but again, with Anita Hicks in speed, that might start. Well, it's called foreshadowing by the play-by-play -play announcer. Yeah, it's good stuff. Thank good you. Stuff, thank you. Oh. Of course, if Crenshaw keeps fouling him out, it's going to be a lot of work for <laughs> the caller, Anita Hickson. Yeah, particularly with Crenshaw having two strikes on her now, you might see Hickson uh, stealing. And then hey, she gets thrown out. Crenshaw starts off with a fresh count next in. And they've got to start to put runners in scoring position. Mm -hmm. You know, down in the 4 nothing hole, now is the time that it's like, okay, let's get back to work. Let's grab the lunch bell, put on the hard hat, and get this done. Makes it a real like, harder to steal when you have a player like Kristen Rivera, and she's got just in addition to the cannon attached to her shoulder, uh, she also has such a quick release. And with a right-handed batter up, she's got a clear view of what Hickson's doing. Crenshaw staying alive as the at-bat continues. Foul ball after foul ball. And great at-bat right now by Kristen Crenshaw. That's your love as a hitter. All right, who's gonna wear down first? You or me, pitcher? Like you were saying earlier, pitch count not really an issue for Caitlin Noble. No, not so much. And then you made a very good point. What ends up tiring uh, oftentimes with the pitcher is, is her mind rather than her arm. Very rarely do you see arm problems with pitchers. The, the one injury that you end up seeing with a with a, a fast quick pitcher is actually maybe a detached bicep, which sounds disgusting, but something like that. <laughs> you don't see the, uh, the rotator cuff injuries that you see in baseball. Well, like of course, they said, do it's a happen. Motion. Yeah, you, they do happen, but you see them around the infield, not so much with the pitcher. Crenshaw extending this at bat. Keeping the Sun Devils in the inning. Christmas in April for the senior third baseman this. That's what I'm talking about on 2-2-2. Two, two, two. You smoke it and they catch it. <laughs> we'll be back with the top of the fifth. Bottom of the fourth. <laughs> First pitch of the game at Husky Stadium today thrown by a Husky legend. It is <laughs> Jamie Clark Day. The Washington Star joining us in the booth as we head into the bottom of the fourth inning. Desiree Serrano still on the hill for Arizona State, Andrew. Yeah, um, I was never a very good pitcher. <laughs> still not. I was never a very good pitcher. That's it. You're pretty good at other things, so we'll keep you around. One one count right now to Lauren Greer. So Jamie, you had the unique opportunity this year to be a part of the U.S. Olympic softball team. Tell us a little bit about what that. Was. I mean, just your experience and what it meant to you as a player. Oh, it was amazing. I had a, I had an amazing year and uh, this summer, um, getting to be in Athens and uh, be a part of that was 
I kind of changed uh, my goals for, I want to play another four years. I wasn't sure uh, how long I was going to stay in it and uh, playing for Coach Andre kind of you know, sealed kinda that. Solidified and, it, huh? Yeah. So he's, I've heard so much about him. What does he do to players that, that just sells them on, gosh, this is the best experience of my life? We see Lauren Greer poke it foul down the line. Well, he, um, he brings out your best, you know, and he holds you to a, a certain standard and um, definitely brought me to a, a, a new level of play. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting back on the field. Now, you're also playing with the Chicago Bandits, is that correct? That's correct. And so playing at the pro level, what's, what's that experience like? Well, I'm going to find out. <laughs> we'll see. You haven't had a chance to practice yet with anybody? We report May 16th. May 16th. Lauren Greer keeping this bat alive. 2-2 the count as she fouls off another pitch. Coming up in June here in Seattle, the 2005 Pacific Rim Sports Summit. What's that going to Tell us a little bit about that opportunity. Well, hopefully we're going to have enough funding to uh, to have the event. Um, I've heard uh, a couple, a couple uh, rumors about that uh, getting called off. Yeah, actually. I think you're up there. Lauren Greer safe. At first, second baseman Kristen Crenshaw down, and it looks like she took an awkward stumble there. Down on the field. What's worse than seeing a player go down, Jamie? That's just awful. We don't yet know exactly what happened on that last play as we take a look at the replay. I saw her and her knee maybe buckled just a little bit as she she tried to feel that one. And uh, Lauren Greer, which because of that, uh, able to be safe at first base. But uh, ang knees aren't supposed to bend at that kind of angle. Angle, rather. Well, and Kristen's been dealing with a sprained ligament in her knee all season. She was hurt early in the year, the starting second baseman. You can see through her pants, I think, the brace that she has to wear. You can see the outline there. And it did, it got under her at an awkward angle. I'm not going to presuppose what might be wrong with her, but if we do get a report, obviously, we'll bring it to you as soon as we know. Pretty scary experience to see a fellow player go down, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. What goes through your mind, Jamie, when, when you're out there, you're in the middle of competition, and you see something like this happen to one of your compadres? Well, you know, you always, you hope they're, they're gonna get up and walk off, walk off the field, first of all. And uh, you can't help but, uh, you know, hope that that never happens to you, too. Arizona State has made its necessary changes. Lauren Greer is at first, and Jackie Hansen will be batting for Washington. Looks like we've moved Mindy Cowell over to second base, and that brings in Jen McCard at third, the regular starting third baseman for the Sun Devils. At least they had the luxury of the gal that's used to playing at the scalding hot corner, as Angie wants to call it now, <laughs> at third. In baseball, it's the hot corner, right, Jamie? But in, in softball, it's got to be like the scalding, smoking hot. Right. Ridiculous point. Yeah, you better be pretty quick. Oh, that guy wasn't very quick. <laughs> Yikes. It's the danger. It's just too short a fence, I say. These poor fans, you have to keep your head in the game if you're in the stands. Or if you're down on the field. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> Took a little bit too long to make her decision. Fought second, went to first. You hear all the time this is a game of inches, and here you see why. Jen McCard just coming into the game. Tries to take a look at second, and just don't have that much time. She tries to reset her feet towards first base, but by then, with Jackie Hansen's speed, she's safe. And she had Mindy Cowles at 5-4 that she was throwing to at first instead of the much bigger target, 5-10 Sherry Zaleski. So the Huskies with runners now on first and second, and no outs. 
This is one of the things that the dogs have had some trouble with in the past, and that is execution, getting the bunts down. Today, it seems we're seeing them do the little things. And how much uh, are you able to follow your Huskies, Jamie? Um, I get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, game scores uh, after from the Northwestern coaching staff. They always keep me keep me up to date. And of course, there's always the team websites, which I, I don't remember how we ever functioned before the internet. <laughs> it's just amazing what's available at your fingertips. For the Huskies, it's GoHuskies.com. For the Sun Devils, it's TheSunDevils.com. You see there, Jamie, you, that you were the Husky career leader in home runs with 73. Not for long. <laughs> well, yeah, Rivera was making a run, and you know, perhaps because of all the intentional walks we've been talking about, she's up to 153, I think now, oh, yeah. walks over her career. Uh, she hasn't gotten much closer to you. Well, it's going to be difficult if no one will pitch to her, you know. But I, they have, they have quite a bit of season left. Yeah, it looked like she was getting ready to shatter your records, and, and uh, we'll have to see. It'll be neck and neck to see if she's able to. What, how do you feel uh, when you see somebody creeping up on something like that? You happy to let it go? Well, I'm, I'm glad it's Kristen. Uh, we played. Don't we played, lie. Well, I am. I'm <laughs> glad it's Kristen. Um, we played uh, Washington. Northwestern played Washington earlier this season as we went through the line giving high fives. She slapped my hand and she gave me the count of how many she had left. <laughs> <laughs> did she really? She sure did. Well, at this point, Kristen Rivera is at 69 for her home runs. And Clark's record stands at 73. And Dominique Lestraps with the ultimate elusive chopper over the pitcher circle. You just saw her signature slap right there. This is what Dominic is so good at doing. She did try to make the uh, the shortstop back end ball and make a throw across the infield. She would bounce it over the, the, the pitcher's head. And uh, by the time the shortstop gets her paws on it in front of second base back, she's standing on first. They got nowhere to put her now, huh? No, and this is what we were talking about earlier. You know, she she walked, she walked, she walked, and they actually had a couple situations where they could have pitched to her and figured out, all right, what where can what can we get out of her? Where can we where can we find a hole in this swing? And and now, now when they can't do that. Right now they run the risk of a of a four run error instead of you know putting her putting her on second or something with a double. The more you know about Kristen. You know, it, it's hard to find a hole, but that's what they, that's what opposing teams need to do. They need to try to figure out how to throw to her. So that when they're in this situation, they, they have something to go to. <laughs> Rivera over the press box with that foul, foul ball. Finds herself in an 0-2 hole, but that's really nice. It's tough. Oh, they, 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 as, as we're all seeing, these are her first swings of the ball game. And 41 difficult walks, to all of a sudden you get your rhythm. Walks and mm -hmm. two in today's game. Yeah, and, and it's hard to keep your rhythm. It, it, I mean, it's very difficult if you're not seeing live pitching every day, day in and day out, uh, to be able to keep you know, your swing at a, a very high level. And she has to be aware of uh, not getting too excited in the situation. First time that she's got a pitcher pitching to her this game. You know, basically loaded. It's hard not to you know, swing a little bit out of your... Out of your shoes? Out of your shoes. Out of something. Very patient there. She could have been undisciplined. That was that was a teaser. Yeah, we saw her settle down. First two strikes, she was uh, she was going at it. pretty aggressive, and now with two strikes, which is something we normally don't see out of Christmas Rivera. She doesn't shorten up with two strikes. Yeah. She's still taking uh, her signature Rivera swing. Better calls time. Let's think about it a little bit more. Maybe give Desiree Serrano a little more to think about out there in the circle. Mm -hmm. Well, even that foul ball, you saw the pace at which the ball came back to yeah. that. And it's frightening. It's frightening the power she has. Oh, oh she oh, pulled that man. one, and it's heading towards the swamp land. <laughs> Way left. It actually might have cleared the swamp land <laughs> on that one. Did you ever hit one into the lake? Um, one time against ASU. Uh, my freshman year. Because you kind of have to clear the swamp a little bit. There's you got to get underneath it, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Way underneath it. There's a lot of swamp out there. There's a lot of swamp and there's some pretty tall trees. You know, getting, uh, a whole lot of nature you're combating when you're going for the lake shot. <laughs> Rivera to the 
shortstop off of Baca's glove and Arizona State's fielding issues continue. Christian Rivera with a very patient at bat and it pays off in spades for the Huskies. Yeah, it shows you what happens when you're able to put the ball in play. You hit a hard ground ball and you make somebody feel that Baca now able to keep this one in the infield. But Rivera, ball that was probably questionable right around the knees. You don't want to let that one go by and leave it in the umpire's hands. And, and Baca just has it roll up her arm. But that's what happens when you put the ball on the ground. You hit the ball up in the air, it's a can of corn for somebody out on, on the infield or on the outfield. Put the ball on the ground and hey, good things can happen. It's been such a tough inning for Arizona State. Lauren Greer reached on Kristen Crenshaw having an injury second uh, situation at second base. Then a third base error brings Jackie Hansen on board. Now you've got two runners that you're dealing with. Dominique Lestrops laces a little single chopper up the middle. Miscues and mistakes. They'll kill you in softball, Angie. Yeah, it, it was the, the four-run third inning. All got started because Dominic Straps hits a single, but the center fielder ends up giving her a two-base error, and she ends up on third base, and, and we know what happened from there. So we're going to take a break with one out in the bottom of the fourth. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. New pitcher on the hill for Arizona State. Ashley Wershke coming in on relief for the Sun Devils. As the inning continues for the Huskies, they've already brought in two. Errors have been an issue for ASU, and now you've got Sarah Hyatt at bat. You see where these numbers on the season. Only 13 appearances. She's made seven starts, eight starts. And on the staff, Wershke actually has the highest ERA, 1.76, uh, compared to the other uh, young ladies. But at this point in the game, you just want to give the Huskies a different look. And remember, these two teams have another game to play tonight. And uh, perhaps they don't really want to show Burkhart or Mindy Cowles and uh, save those two pitchers for tomorrow. Well, they really need Mindy Cowles at second right now, too, with, with Kristen Crenshaw going out. And they had to move Cowles from third to second. She's kind of been all over the place today. I think it would be really the wrong time to bring in a player with, with so much on her mind. Sure. And at this point in the season, uh, you really start to see how much depth you have, have as a ball club. Injuries, they're inevitable. Inevitable and so unfortunate, especially when you've got a team that's either got momentum or trying to get its momentum back. It's kind of funny this year that the Pac-10 almost seems like it's turned upside down. Generally, you don't see Oregon State at the top of the Pac-10 standings. This year, they are. And UCLA near the bottom with LSU in Washington. Hyatt takes one just past Baca, who got her mitten on it, but it was not enough. Got the leather down, but flew by. Bases loaded for Washington. Now that is the dogs with their number seven. Amy Miner. Amy Miner, who got the scoring started for the Huskies back in the box now. And were you ever like this on yourself, Jamie? Where, you know, like Amy Miner, you were, uh, you know, so hard on yourself. And, and uh, did it take you a while to realize that, hey, you know, I got to ease up, that uh, this game is one built on failure? I really enjoyed playing with Amy Miner because of, because of her her attitude because of the way that she expected, what she expected from herself, you know, day in, day out. She's like this at practice, too. You know, she's, she really, really pushes herself. Your coach, the Olympic coach I'm talking about, uh, Mike Kendra and I were talking about, to, you know, practicing at the level that you have to play. Uh, and that was the biggest thing he was trying to teach his kids is that you can't just practice at one level and then expect to play at the other. Otherwise, the game will speed up on you and, and, uh, and come back and bite you. Yeah, definitely. That was the difference last year that I noticed playing with that team was that uh, every day we stepped on the field. Um, every day we stepped on the field to practice or for a game, it was, it was fast-paced. At the same level. Absolutely. At the same level. 
do you think that that could be because you were playing with the best, most elite players that the world had to offer? <laughs> yeah, that probably played They came with role. that spirit, yeah. and then it was coached, and they already knew how to do what he wanted. Oh, yeah. He always used to say, uh, he felt like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> I bet. He did. He, he talked about yesterday having a hard time coming back to the college team and the, and the speed of the game slowing down. And, and I smacked him upside of the head a couple of times. And uh, I mean, he's got such a fantastic team, such a talented team. He's number two in the country. And, uh, you know, he's thinking he doesn't uh, <laughs> have as much talent. I mean, he's got people sitting on the bench that, that most programs would, would love to have starting on the field. Spoiled brat. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Saw Amy Miner staying on that one. Wasn't able to let it get quite deep enough. She likes things on the left side of the infield. We saw that with the uh, with the line drive. Amy Miner actually struck out with oh, that sorry. happy fist at the back. Sorry. I'm enjoying my conversation well, with Jamie. we've got Jamie. Like we've chatty. got sunshine in Seattle, which we never thought we'd have when we woke up this morning, and it was pouring. All kinds of things. Olympics. And you see with Kathy Fisk, it's not a whole lot of movement. Real short stride, hands don't move a whole bunch. She's a, a tough kid. She's yeah. back from that, that uh, hand injury. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, bet she, I bet she feels it every day. That's got to sting. A lot of Huskies battling injuries right now. Dominic with straps, he's got a high ankle sprain. Also had a concussion earlier this year. Fisk with another hard shot. And the Huskies are just attacking the Autumn Baca. She's having such a tough inning, and they continue to go at her with these awkward, bad angle, just scooting them by her. She's just getting a piece of her glove on them, but they're, they're rolling by. What do you have to do on a ball like that, Jamie? I mean, just swallow it up, sit on it? Well, you know, it's, it's a matter of playing the hop. You know, and, and not sitting back and knowing when to come and get it and, and, and knowing when to take a, a, a deep angle for it. Um, you just don't want to get caught in between. You know? They say there's no such thing as, as bad hands, just bad feet. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And Baca being a freshman, another one of the freshmen that Linda Wells is bringing into the Arizona State program this year. Angie and I were talking earlier, Jamie, about the difference in the speed of the game as you go from high school to college, and then you were mentioning the difference that you saw going from college to the elite international level. Oh, definitely. Um, high school, college is, is, is a huge leap, uh, especially with the technology of the bats that you're using, and, uh, and uh, the ball as well is, is much more lively. Strap ball, Caitlin Noble. One and one the count with runners on the corners. Pinch runner now for Fisk at first. We've got Kaylin Ellinger, the freshman out of Monroe, Washington. Fisk has done her work, got on base. This is a kid uh, with Ellinger on first base. That it, it, you never see this kid without a smile on her face. She's actually only the second person in the family to attend college. Her grandfather was the first, and he attended UW, and he graduated from the fourth ever medical class at the University of Washington. And it's, it's so many neat legacy stories at the University of Washington, people following their families here, brothers and sisters. Yeah, that's a great stat right there. Yeah. Uh, best going. So many uh, players, uh, uh, actually there's players on both teams for modern day as well. It seems like you know, more and more of this is just a pipeline for the next level. Oh yeah, modern day was always very competitive. Washington Huskies up 8 nothing in the bottom of the fourth. A couple of big innings for Washington coming in the bottom of the third with four runs and another four here in the bottom of the fourth. And Noble, the starting pitcher right now. Noble to the second baseman Cowles calls it in gets her out and the inning is finally over for Arizona State Huskies up 8-0 we'd like to thank Jamie Clark for joining us on Jamie Clark Day at Husky Stadium 
Welcome back to Husky Stadium. Big advantage for Washington, eight nothing is Arizona State saying goodbye to its coach Linda Wells after the season, retiring after 31 years in the college softball coaching ranks. We asked her, hey coach, what's next for you? I'm gonna catch a big fish. I'm gonna see the pyramids. You know, I'm gonna go to my grandmother's for lunch. I'm gonna watch my nieces and nephews play ball. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, absolutely. I I'll be invited over to Grandma's for lunch. <laughs> there is no off-season in softball. And uh, as you can imagine, these are a whole list of things that I feel like she's never been able to do because you just don't have time off with the team and, and uh, scouting and, and everything else. And she's not only the Arizona State head coach, she's still also coaching the Greek national team, mm -hmm. which she took over for the 2004 Olympics. She's going to continue with that this summer she has all kinds of international appearances in Prague and Beijing that she's looking ahead to this summer so she has a lot of travel lined up and like she said the opportunity to just go enjoy a day. How fun for her though what a great experience. And she has certainly earned it with 910 career victories. She has worked long enough. Heidi Knobby bring it up. Kind of getting that feeling right now that uh, Caitlin Noble's feeling a little bit. Sixth strikeout of the game for Noble. As we look out at the scoreboard right now, the score with the Husky scoring four in the bottom of the fourth inning is eight nothing. And with softball, they have a rule that after five innings, if you are up by either eight nothing or ten nothing, you get to actually decide in your home park if it's eight or if it's ten. Uh, that is it. That's a run rule. That's game over. So Caitlin Noble right now two outs away from the win. So that foul ball rocket down the third base line. A couple of years ago, they didn't have that fence Ooh. in front of the dugouts, and those dugouts are concrete. And so all of a sudden, boom! This hardcore softball you know, would would go in there. It was like a bullet ricocheting off those concrete walls. Where somebody's life was taken, they had to put those fences yeah, up. Yeah, that was a good call. Leon Mbaka, who had such a tough inning, last inning defensively, staying alive, takes ball one. It's been a really rough go right now for Arizona State. Playing in the Pac-10, as we mentioned, you are facing the best competition in the nation, game in, game out. Sun Devils now facing their 12th straight top 25 opponent today in Washington, which is ranked number 24. They are two and nine over that span. It's just been, as Angie mentioned, injuries, defensive issues, a rough go. As Kate Lenovo has an opportunity to possibly strike out the side. She's got two already. These are very important games for both of these ball clubs because they are having off years because they are struggling right now in Pac-10 play. So you've got to find a, a team to beat up on. You've got to find a Pac-10 team to, to fi try to get your wins out of. And, and these were very important games for ASU to come up here and, and try to get them against Washington. Washington also in a very precarious position because they're staring at you know their first non-500 season forever. Washington only one and five in conference play and a rough road ahead at UCLA next weekend and then returning home to face UCLA. The same UCLA squad which one hit Arizona State in yesterday's game. Karen keeping the inning alive. Singles in the left. Not going to take the turn, just going to say, hey, I'm on base, it's a good place to be. Let's see what Michelle Smith can do now. Bridget Carey, the transfer from San Diego State, dance major on first. Yeah, actually, she uh, she will on occasion bust out a little routine. <laughs> Michelle Smith, 0 for 2. She's been befuddled by Noble today. Two plays in this one.
Smith staying alive, coming at bat. The Sun Devils are not used to games of this caliber because Arizona State has played so many close game this year. They've lost one run games in three of their last five games, a couple of one nothing battles. Washington also dealing with a lot of close calls this year. So this game is a little bit different for these two teams to see this yeah, many runs on the board. Fisk fields it, 5-3, inning over. Game over. Yeah. Kathy Fisk was towards the last down and because of the run rule, eight nothing and uh, four and a half innings of play is all we're gonna need. Washington with two four run innings in the bottom of the third and in the bottom of the fourth took advantage of some miscues and the Huskies get their second conference victory. Eight nothing the final over Arizona State. Kristen Rivera actually with a chance to hit today after two intentional walks brings in a couple of RBI. Tough day. Four errors for Arizona State. Defensive miscues the story for the Sun Devils and the Huskies were able to take advantage. We will be right back to recap this Pac-10 softball battle.